Right. Okay. Uh, so today's session is uh, about how to create the user personas and uh, <clears throat> is the user persona. I have to tell you about this segment. So today's topic is more related to the start of a business, the start of phase, product start, or your middle of the product when you you are running your own business in your products <coughs> excuse me so how well do you know your user that's the key question a million dollar question probably not is the answer uh, which we normally get from the product owners and the product stakeholders most of the product owners started their products with the <coughs> and the <coughs> Most of the product owners start their products uh, with the technical backgrounds that um, we can do uh, such kind of services or we can develop such kind of product in .NET, Java, or Oracle, or some technological barrier or technological information. So you have to start with the simple question that is, um, <clears throat> you have to know your user and their user needs. We have already, uh, conducted a session on the user research uh, where I had uh, provided you the, the information how to research your users. So in this session, the user research and uh, the user persona are one of the similar things, but with some more details about the persona development. What is persona, why we need it, and how to build it? That is the main key questions for this session. The information is in the people not in your head at the tea hall. Um, if you believe that you are going to rock this world, you are going to uh, put the dent into the universe or just uh, simulating the keyword or simulating the uh, phrases of Steve Jobs. So you don't have to, um, I think someone is facing some issue. Shiraz is facing some, some issue. It's just taking to your page no life link. Uh, can you like the page? I guess so. Okay, so <clears throat> you don't have to um, listen to your uh, mind on this. You have to work as a <clears throat> on the facts. You have to um, work based on the, your, your people research and your user research. User persona. It's uh, developing a deep understanding of your user's needs and end up making a lot of hypothesis about how to solve for them. Uh, for them. New design process should always start with the persona development. It, it has different names where you uh, basically confirm or write down the user needs based on the empathy, what they are looking for, what they want from, what are their feelings about the product or the situation. You have to list down in a very systematic way. And that systematic way is your user persona. Um, if, if some of you are from the marketing background or the business background, you must already aware about the user personas. But if you are not, then this is the details. The different names are the same thing. The user persona, the user profile, persona, buyer persona, customer persona. There's a different hats uh, of the same thing. What exactly it is? Is a model of a target audience member which you wanted to target. The objectives and characteristics represents the needs of a larger group of users. Uh, helps knowing your users on a deeper level 
by gathering information about how they think, feel, and act. What does this mean? This means uh, if uh, if you're in starting of a, of your product or business, uh, you should uh, think of your uh, target audience member. What is their uh, ob objectives? What are their characteristics? And how they feel, how they think, and how they act. This complete scenario is based on the assumption. As per our last lecture, we don't have to work in the assumption. But to start with some some areas or some things, you can start with the assumptions and make a an hypothesis for the first way. And the second way, you have to analyze with the, with the and polish the research on the actual. And I will, I will uh, let you know how to target your actual users. That's on the little screens. So, but you have to list down the feelings and their thinkings. Uh, how a persona look like? Uh, this is a template. You can see, you can uh, place a picture of your user. If you're interviewing of uh, someone, this, you can use this template. And I will share these templates with you. You have to write their names, their designation, the company, what is their age, what is their gender, um, lives in education, uh, the persona elements, what they're feeling about the product, what, they, what their goals and objectives, what their interests are. What is their personality? And what is their pain points? The reasons to use our product, the reasons to buy our product, what is their current skills, what are their technical skills? I will show you them in detail. Let's let me go through a real persona. It's an actual content uh, in our last session or one of our last sessions where I was uh, guiding you about the user research I had shown you that this is a way of developing an actual persona and uh, I had developed it for one of my customer the product name was Vajog and it was a medical application let me show you one persona Is this the name is George Frederick? Age, gender, lives in education, is a medical student in King Edward Medical University. His motivation now, these are the levels which you change based on the interview. If you're interviewing this guy and you assess that this person is having a fear in his mind, so uh, this is his fear level fair gauge if you think that no he is a fearless person you have to make it gauge this down or change the level based on its achievements if he is looking for the achievements you can drag it down if he had achieved many things so what is what is his motivation on, on the achievements on the growth in power in social or you can write down your own values which you wanted to gauge the goals, uh, you have to written down specifically goals of this user and what are their frustration point. Always remember, stay or stick to your main goal of the questions. Uh, maybe his goal would be to be a CEO of a company, but that is not a useful uh, information which you are seeking for. So you have to write down the goal which should surround around your product. I will provide you some uh, questions format, uh, format also which you have to ask to identify the goals, the motivation aligned with your product and the frustration points as well. Then there is his bio. What he wanted from this product. What is his personality? Is he uh, thinking or feeling, or more thinking, less feeling, or more feeling, less thinking? Why is judging or perceiving how he is allowed in technology, in software, in mobile apps? So after this session, you will get a one individual person information written down in a persona template. And after this, you can uh, write down multiple. And after analyzing the 
the information from different uh, user bases, uh, the age group, or maybe different uh, career level. You can uh, you can get the collective values, and then from these values, that collective persona is called your persona to start with your product. Or you start, uh, I will let you know how to start with even it is an ongoing process which you have to take on throughout your PDLC, the product development life cycle. The type of personas, the two types of basic uh, different personas. Number one is the persona which I told you or shown you, and second is proto persona. The persona is based on the behaviors and motivations of real people. Who have observed and represent them throughout the design process. You meet with them, you talk with them, get the empathy from the two-way communication and conversation. You are listening them, you are sensing them, you are watching them to do the things. That's how you get the persona values. And there is a product persona. The product persona is or uh, ad hoc persona. It's a persona that is created using a product stakeholders' intuition and anecdotal evidence uh, what are these things which you can cover from different variety of the manners that is discovery workshops or the data research the intuition is the ability to understand something instinctively without the need of conscious reasoning uh, we are watching someone and uh, he is uh, he is simply um, squeezing the ballpoint so he is in some tension, he cannot tell you, but you are watching or sensing without any reasoning, but you are writing down these feelings as well. And the second thing is uh, <clears throat> incognitive evidence. That is evidence collected in a casual or inf informal manner and relying heavily on entirely on personal testimony. Uh, you are sitting with someone on Gloria Jeans, you are sitting with someone on cafe, bar, or, or maybe in office, but informally, without writing the notes, without writing anything, this is the evidence you are collected in casual format. So these formats are called the proto persona. One thing you must remember: these both personas are derived from the real people. You cannot say that we get this information from the internet research. We get this information that people are talking about, or or we we think that. The people will love this. That's your thinking. What I had uh, already shown you, uh, quotation, the information is in the people, not in your head. So you have to talk with people, meet with people, create the proto persona, and then create the actual persona. And you see there would be uh, too many differences in, in both proto and actual personas. Why personas are important? Basically, you have to get the empathy of your users. Uh, put yourselves in their shoes. Uh, people having a different uh, one picture shows many um, aspects. Uh, you are wearing a shoes, and uh, you are targeted. And you are trying to sell it that my shoes are having these. Uh, it's a leather shoes. It has such capabilities. It's the best shoes. No one gonna buy that shoes until or unless they uh, start wearing it and feeling it and then they will let you know okay it's feeling good or not the same thing happens with your product or your business are your customers feeling your product or sensing your product as a good product or not that's the customer not you so you have to start with your users or customers but they are feeling and what are their pain points and you have, you will be targeting so this is a example why persona important. There's a deeper understanding of your audience to create exceptional products. Uh, you cannot create exceptional product without the deeper understanding of your audience. Remember what, um, what was the iPhone. Uh, if Steve Jobs will not deeper, deeply understand the pain points of his audience that uh, people are no more wanted uh, uh, if, if I will provide them uh, a sense a touch with their own fingers uh, then it will be more suitable than uh, the existing 
uh, mobiles or if I provide them a full screen, uh, it will be a more best user experience for the users as per the available uh, stuff. If you're thinking in your user experience in innovative manner to change the style and feeling of what is currently happening, you have to identify the pain points of the current available technical barriers and then provide the solution out of it. The second helps to answer the key question, who are we designing or developing for? If you are not knowing your user, it sounds like you are going to a city A, but you are sitting in a train which is leading you to a city B. So when you have to reach at city B, you should be blaming yourself. You must know your users before even your arrival. Helps to understand motives, concerns, and expectations of the target users. Referring to the customer persona or referring to the customer persona. If you will see what's her motive, this is her motive, this is her wants, this is her feeling, these are the frustration points which she felt. Uh, can you guys uh, facing any issue in the video rendering? Yes, someone mentioned that it is uh, it is a bit slow, and uh, I'm talking a bit more, but. Uh, finding some okay I'm going to refresh my Facebook page so what I was telling is about the goals and the frustration points you can get the goals and frustration points from the user persona and these will be your uh, helps to understand about the motives the concerns and the expectations of your task target users it helps in setting that direction for decision making in ux design process if you remember this point this is a very important point i will tell you in later screens or later slides that why this user persona is so important and what will we get out of it um, in, in, in our user experience designs and uh, it helps in product backlog development directly related to the user desired outcomes uh, if <laughs> some of you, uh, some of you are from uh, from the product development or uh, or the managers, they must be aware about the product backlog development. How we get the list from the uh, product development, uh, product backlog, and the sprint list items, you will get directly from these personas. So this is a systematic way. It's not a theory. It's 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 not just to facilitate your designs. It's actually to facilitate your sprint list items, to facilitate your product backlog. It facilitates how you will proceed your, uh, your workflow. So it is a small investment that can pay off big time. And you will know in the latest slides. Uh, the other side of coin. There are many established theories supported by well-known UX researchers that personas pass their prime. Really, that if someone uh, is saying that um, the persona is normal and uh, we should uh, uh, end them, that's a very strong argument. Norman and Nielsen Group, I had uh, shared a link with you guys and you can see the personas like sorting rocks. What are personas? Why are personas jobs to be done 
all of the members of one community or the multiple well-known community are talking against personas. Now, let me tell you, they are not telling the truth and they are not telling a lie. So what exactly they are telling? But they say, the theories developed to support that UX business don't need personas anymore, comprised of the following key points. Personas are, fitch, are fictional representation and generalization of a cluster of your target users. They are human-like snapshots of relevant and meaningful uh, commonalities in your customer group. The second point is uh, personas were created but not used. Uh, some um, high-level management argue with it that um, we have created them before and no one, nobody even used them. That's a very strong argument. Then there's no buy-in from leadership. We already know who our customers are. We have been doing this for 30 years. So that's again a strong argument. Personas were created in asylum, it's isolation. So the question is, where did these personas even come from? You are sitting in front of your computer, do some uh, do some information, architectural research, and then just one day you get these personas that you had uh, developed these personas. So where did these personas even come from? These are all targeted uh, or, or very uh, heavy arguments. Let me uh, show you on the previous screen. Can you remember about the outside of uh, persona versus proto persona where I mentioned that proto personas are developed when you are writing some theory or uh, based on some information, but even then they should be the real people and the persona they are actually your users your target users and you uh, You have to physically meet with them So you can clearly see they are not against personas. They are actually against the fictional representations of the personas. They are against the uh, uh, They are against those personas which are uh, which came uh, from some uh, outer world and uh, and the answer of we already know who our customers are we have been doing this for 30 years and provide you in the next screen the answer for this slide for, for this point and uh, the personas were created in the silo where this persona even came from no you are creating the personas based on proper meetings with the proper write down the names and, and the persons with the exact feelings and get the sign signature from them. So these are the points. They are against the proto personas. They are against the personas which are not real. And uh, at the same time, they are very much, uh, <clears throat> they are very much aligned with the real personas. Uh, can I see the questions somewhere? Uh, I just said that you had written some questions, but I'm unable to see those questions. How to check that? Uh, can you show me? No, from here. There's a page. I'm still unable to see the questions. So if I will see, so I will respond better. So let me respond to you uh, for this. For this point, that we already know who our customers are. My friends, if you you are in the business since ages, if your product already selling, if you are pioneer, see what happened with big companies. Have you heard about these names? They're examples of large corporations that failed to innovate based on the changing personas, behaviors, and some ended up in failed businesses.
these are some of the biggest companies in the world watch nokia kodak yahoo blockbuster ibm xerox sony myspace national geography all of them were the big brands where are these let me just provide a basic information about the nokia without persona your business can be at stake my friends first to create a cellular network in the world nokia was the global leader and uh, in the mobile phones with the arrival of the internet other mobile companies started understanding how data not voice was the future of the communication the company overestimated the strength overestimated the strength of its brand and believed they could arrive late in the smartphone game and succeed uh, change in user demand requires rework on the empathic level and redefine user personas to align new user experience based on the updated user research so what nokia did they did not see the future what has been changed what are the people demanding nowadays they had forgotten that uh, how they should align their current uh, user experience with the, with the near with new demands and new needs so you must find the new needs you must understand your user the persona is ongoing process you must need it the actual persona and you must need it throughout the product development life cycle or even your business development life cycle so i've shown you another side of picture as well where personas used there are a few questions my friend i should take on these questions uh, Can we try making a persona of fictional users or should we conduct real time interviews of user? Um, if you're starting some, let me uh, join with this new screen and I will answer, my answer will relate to this screen. So where personas used, technically we use personas to start a new product development or business decision or innovate in existing product or business. So if you are uh, creating a new business, a new product, or innovating in existing product or business, in both cases, you can start with the uh, fictional personas for the sake of the theory, but it should be related with some information or real information and properly branded as a proto persona. On the later stages, you have to involve your real personas and match with these personas. There would be discrepancies, there would be differences, and you have to finalize based on real interviews. The real users, the real interviews will help you to make a proper persona. And as I have mentioned, it is an ongoing process. You have to check them, update them, and iterate them on the changes and, and the effect or impact would be in your product. Uh, I hope I had uh, answered your question. So there would be, how can we assure validity of the customer persona? Does it process influence uh, persona development? Uh, when you uh, in in a, in, a, in my last session of the user research, you have to you have to listen. You don't have to speak. One of my teacher and mentor mentioned that when you start with your uh, user research just sharp so you have to close your mouse shut your mouse mouth and open your ears that's the tip of getting the valid customer persona and find their feeling can we try making a persona of a fictional user or should we conduct real-time interviews um, i have responded it's, it should be real time and uh, after developing personas, we use where personas actually used. After developing personas, we create scenarios. And from scenarios, we draft user stories. 
from user stories, we have a roadmap for the user experience of the product. So this is how we need. Write the personas in a way, made a scenario, the scenario of the user focus uh, focuses on bringing the context uh, and of the users into the design process. A scenario of uses a story with a thought about people and their activities, including the actions, events, and settings. Um, <clears throat> you have to do a lot of write-ups, my friends, if you are uh, if you really wanted a uh, proper user experience. Uh, then there would be a user stories. You can draft multiple user stories from the user scenarios, and then from each user story, you can you can uh, write in, in a way in a in a agile narrative. What is that narrative? There is a type of user. I want some goal so that some reason. Example: I am a doctor. I want um, <clears throat> I want fund uh, for my medical research so that I can. Um, I can uh, contribute more medical research in the medical field. That is one example of a user story. And for this user story, you can see multiple screens. So your user screens, your, glow, your, your flow, your product development roadmap will start it based on the user stories, which is based on the scenarios, which is based on the user personas. So that is where we actually use these personas. Should personas also test the product during user acceptance testing? Uh, the personas, Shiraz, a very good question. The personas must be tested throughout the all phases of your product development life cycle. If one of your customer is uh, seeking uh, something or some are uh, their frustration point, your product development uh, timeline is two years and the problems or the frustration points uh, <clears throat> were related to two years old personas. You are developing your product based on that persona and all of the sudden you get a new product, maybe iPhone has discovered or some new technology discovered. The frustration point already is solved. So now still you continue with your product, the frustration point already gone. So you have to ensure with the frustration based on your each sprint list item delivery goals that are these frustration points still exist? If exist, to what level, to what extent? So not only the user acceptance testing, throughout your product development life cycle, you have to ensure with your base, and that base is your customer persona or your user persona. I hope I answered the question. If there's any other question, you can write it down. Okay. So, how to create the persona? Creating persona is an idea to put yourself in your user's shoes. So, Creating persona is an idea to put yourself in your user's shoes, as I had already mentioned. So there are two different aspects. Number one aspect of your persona, how to develop it. It's a 10 basic components, name, professional and personal background, demographic, such as age, gender, education, uh, ethnicity, um, family status, etc. Goals, I need and want statements, concerns, past technologies, photo. I'd already shown you from the persona. This, everything has been available and mentioned there. There is another question from Tayyiba. Uh, about the theories. This one, the other side of coin. Why are some theories don't appreciate persona creation? Does these theories have something to do with reality? 
See, there's a biggest group, NN group, the Northern and Nelson group. And uh, there are many big groups who are against the persona development. And I had mentioned that why the, the answer of the why is these are the four areas because of which they are against it. I, <clears throat> some of them, some of them even said that we are just wasting time of uh, conducting the interviews and we, we should not waste the time, simply do the job and put your effort into some productive manner, build the product and just put it into the market. Um, it's, it sounds to me like uh, uh, cook anything, I just have to eat. I don't don't tell me that uh, what are the flavors, what are the taste, or what are the what 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 you want, what your desires. So you have to start with proper proper planning. You have to start with proper uh, area where you leads to. And my simple question to these students, as I already mentioned, the number one it's a falsify because they are not referring to the personas; they are referring to the proto personas or assumed personas. What I am telling is based on some real personas. So you have to differentiate real interviews. They are not against them. Just check their website. They are conducting the real interviews. So if they are conducting and still they are saying that um, we are against them, why they are conducting the interviews? So they are conducting the interviews. They are against the fictional personas, not against the real personas. That's the main difference. I hope I answered the question as well. Now, about coming back to how to create the persona, the very first part was these aspects, which I had uh, shown you with the real persona. Uh, yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> in this persona, there are five steps to create the persona. You have to survey your existing users or possible users. Um, if you're already a brand and you have uh, the list of the users, you must have to conduct a survey. The survey must be short, they must be straightforward and uh, there should be a motive on it. And I had uh, mentioned this in, in the previous uh, user research part in very detail. Uh, then you're, um, if you don't have the existing users, then the possible users, you should uh, uh, find list them from some community website, from social networks, but keep track what your actual customer would be or the possible user would be. You will get from the user persona, obviously. So you have to conduct the survey first get out of the building it's not only the uh, internet stuff many people believe that we will sit in a chair and just conduct a research you know, based on some information architecture and then uh, based on some information and uh, find that information is real or not and then we will conduct some surveys or online surveys via survey monkey or other stuff the real thing is you must meet the people that's the that's the first main point then there's uh, research online. You must conduct research, obviously, uh, to ensure that if you are going in the right direction or not. Analyze your data. There are different approaches if, uh, where you will analyze your data if, if your data is authentic or not. And then share. Uh, share with your users uh, your story, uh, your product which you are looking for to get their point of view. Uh, these five points are discussed in very detail in, in the user research video. So you can check how to analyze the data, how to do the research online, how to meet with people, and how to survey your users. Uh, so, is there any question? Please uh, ask. Uh, your questions should focus on the user intro questions or topic product specific questions the product opportunity questions or the product reactions. Uh, so I'm available for your questions. Uh, there are a few things which I can uh, provide you. It's, uh, 
it is a part of this uh, session as well these are the customer persona templates which i will gonna share with you guys uh, it's an ai format psd format these are the formats the template in uh, photoshop look like this and uh, all of them are in proper folders you can simply click here and write down the name age 25 then the, based on your data which you conduct through the interviews change the picture also there is a picture of a male there is a picture of female and you can these these are the uh, these are the companies which they worked for so this is a photoshop template and then there is a illustrator template i'm going to show you this template this is an ai template you can easily edit these templates based on your choice and uh, the color codes as well you can change the colors if you want based on the brand of the user and uh, there is an SVG SVG can be editable in, in the SVG editing format one and the same thing and then there is uh, word now you can see this in word is my video working for you guys Shares for the large organization, how you archive personas in PowerPoint or some software. Uh, Shares, I'm already showing you. These are the uh, different, um, uh, I guess I haven't uh, done it with the PowerPoint, but maybe if I will done, I will update in the, in the same link. I will provide you all of these. So you can use the PowerPoint and the Word into Excel into the Photoshop, any kind of template which you are easy with, or your company are easy with. If you're easy with the Photoshop, with the Word file, you can see this, you can change right here. So it's it's up to you, which or, and your organization. Jekyll, uh, how often should the persona of user be updated? Okay, uh, number one, uh, I had already mentioned throughout the uh, product development life cycle, if you, have uh, 18 sprints in your uh, product backlog so the least time is the least figure is 18 for each sprint list items deliverable for each sprint deliverable you have to ensure from your customer persona so that's a that's a persona which you have to check and the update it's uh, practically it's normally updates once in the product development life cycle or sometimes never so that's uh, it, it, it again depends on which product you're working. If you're working with the Facebook, they are changing uh, uh, in after three months or two months. So that's that's how Facebook working. How can we predict persona of user that are not available to meet in person uh, real time? Uh, Jacob, you cannot predict. Uh, the prediction uh, assumption, I had uh, mentioned in one of my existing uh, video sessions that how we call it so the assumption is a ridiculous part the prediction is a ridiculous part you have to be very very insured and factual about your uh, requirement if you are targeting some user he must exist he will not out of he, he must not be from the outer world that uh, some superman will come or, or alien figure should be my customer so it must be a real figure you have to meet with them if you cannot meet with them, then you can uh, uh, you can find the base. The, the world is now a global village, and you can meet with anyone at any time. So these are the uh, templates for a sketch, Word, SVG, PSD, AI, and XT. So I had uh, created a link for you guys. Uh, let me find the link.
Okay, here's the link. You can get the templates from this link. And any other question? You're most welcome, Jacob. You're most welcome, Shiraz. You're most welcome, Taiba. And uh, anyone else having any question? So we can wrap up. So today's success story is we had finalized the, se the session plus questions four minutes before I planned. This is basically a very important aspect. Why, um, let, let me share once again. So this example, doesn't matter if you are pioneer in your field or not, doesn't really matter if how big you are, doesn't matter how you are targeting your users, doesn't matter how you, uh, you are earning how, how big million dollar company you are. You must not overestimate the strength of your brand. If there is a change in users demand, and by the way, you can uh, start with the uh, mm, uh, with, with, with the uh, change in a market in, in the user demand. It's, it's the hardest thing. But the easy thing is if there is any user demand change, you must look with that shift and require a rework on the empathic level that that needs um, if not in months at least a year uh, Jacob I hope you won't mind about this so I, it can be in a year so that's you must change a new user experience and that user experience does not mean your design the user experience means your hardware the user experience means your software the user experience means your flow. The user experience means your design and brand. The user experience means how the customer will get a feeling out from using of your product. You have to ensure uh, you will get too many articles and uh, I hope most of you, go, uh, you guys are having a good user experience background. So I'm not telling you how to design UI, how to design or, or how to work in the UX um, on the wireframes. I'm telling you what you should consider while drafting, designing, or even thinking about starting an app or changing a product. So this is your belief. Otherwise, there's, these are the big names. There's a Nokia. There is Kodak, the first DSLR camera, but never shown to the company or, or a people. There's a Xerox, uh, providing the first mouse, but never shown to the market. Uh, they believe that it's it's too early. Codex thinks again it's too early. Nokia thinks that a complete touch system is too early. Yahoo has uh, too many uh, blunders in the business world. They can Yahoo can purchase Facebook. Even Yahoo can purchase too, too many big brands and organizations, but they backed up. They did not believe the values of changing into the user's experience. Blockbuster ended up IBM. Uh, where is IBM? It was giant of the computers. Where is MySpace? Even uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, came and $75 million uh, offer was uh, uh, to, to, to buy Facebook, but uh, MySpace lowered it down. National Geography, where it is? Where is Sony? So uh, there is a list, list of over 50 or 100 big companies, the multi-million dollar companies in the recent past, but simply they did not focused on their customer changes. They did not work into their customer personas. That's impact with their business. That's the main thing that you, you guys must. Uh, I think there's uh, no more question, right? 
following to the steps of my startup, I appreciate this comprehensive session. I would love to discuss. We'll be contact you soon. Uh, sure, Kosar Bilal, I'm uh, available. You can uh, just simply uh, write me down a few lines. Uh, Zulkar Nen. Zulkar Nen uh, asked me to meet me in person and we have our schedule for tomorrow. I had uh, called him. So if uh, anyone wants to meet me in person, I'm available. If anyone wants to um, direct one-on-one -on -one meeting or Facebook, Skype, in person, I'm available. Just shoot the line so I can properly schedule the time. So let's wrap up and it's 10 1. So, guys, I enjoyed the session and I'm not sure that you enjoyed or not. But if you guys have any okay, Shiraz, one last question Can we use these templates in corporate? Definitely, we'll do proper attribution that these templates were given by Azul Khan and Ansari. This Shiraz, uh, you must use them. And uh, when you are uh, writing something, it's a copyrighted. I am providing you uh, as a fee. When you see these templates, there's uh, uh, metadata information embedded in these templates. And uh, I properly placed my watermarks and my, my information and details into it. So if you are uh, providing the attribution or using it in the corporate world and even for your own product, you simply have to give one thing to me and I deserve it. You simply have to email me and get an approval that uh, for, the, for each product, it's not if for 100 products you are using the same template, you will just have to drop the line that for this product we're using your, this template and that's it. And uh, I will... Uh, and you're allowed to, you can use it. That's it. So uh, if you guys have any other, any other question, you can uh, message here as well and I will respond to you. Thank you very much for the session, guys. Thanks a lot and we'll uh, continue these sessions and hopefully next session I will come up with another session. Take care. My friends, fit बहुत तेज़ नहीं बोला। जहाँ तो बैठा था कहता है यार तो बहुत ही तेज़ बोलता है। एंड भी बोलने लगता है वैसे। हाँ? चलो नहीं लगे। आह, I clicked to end this session and isn't there any pop up if you end this live session you will able to queue and Okay.